What is the design fiction framework? That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, another uh, interesting thing that I've been uh, pioneering. So um, just, I don't want to make like a history class about design fiction, but the, the, coin, the term has been coined, I think, in the 90s at, at Stanford. And, uh, and the idea of, of design fiction is, um, uh, is to create kind of a, a practice where you can question a bit the future and, and use fiction and imagination as a way to, again, ask questions about uh, decisions that are made today, uh, decisions that should be made tomorrow, opportunity threat, and so on. Um, so that's kind of the big container of, of design fiction is like leveraging some kind of design tools to question a lot of things about the future. Um, and within this, I've been kind of pioneering a bit design fiction and creating my own kind of practice, uh, uh, you know, working with a lot of students, a lot of companies, a lot of startups on this. And where I've kind of landed is um, uh, I've packaged my own version of design fiction into um kind of a, a process, like a, there's a few steps that you have to follow. Um, and again, the goal of this is to say, no one can predict the future. It's impossible to predict the future. Yet a lot of organizations are basing their choices on predictions. Well, the market is going to be like this. Our future user is going to be this and so on, which is doomed to fail because um, since they don't know the future, uh, this is going to be right until something else happens. And if you look at you know all the events that are happening worldwide, uh, no one had really, you know, anticipated the COVID. No one had really anticipated the war in Ukraine and so on. So every year almost there is at a global scale some events that haven't been planned and that are completely disrupting strategies and, um, and uh, you know, companies' plans and so on. Um, and it's the same at a, you know, more micro level where within an organization there's also this, um, within an industry there could be those kind of shifts that has been anticipated and so on. So the goal is to say we can predict the future, we know things gonna gonna happen, uh, you know, later than sooner than later. Uh, so we're gonna use design fiction to imagine a lot of possible, and I say possible, not probable, but possible scenarios of futures. Um, and we start thinking about future as a, a plural notion. There is many futures, um, and the goal is that the more we're able to run some of those potential scenarios, the more we're able to kind of anticipate some, okay, new opportunities, new threat, and so on. And we have a much more wide angle to look at the future. Um, and so this is extremely useful when you're doing strategy in a large organization, for instance, because uh, all of a sudden you're not just, you know, drawing a, a line between today and tomorrow, but you're actually having an array of, of different options and you can have a much more nimble approach of the future, what we call future modeling. You're creating different models. And you say the moment this event is happening, it, it actually opens up a lot of new opportunities and it's shutting down a lot of others. So you can have a much more um, informed approach of the future as things are unfolding. Um, it can also be very interesting for an investor or a startup, for instance, because all of a sudden, you know, when, when a startup is raising fund or when an investor is, is funding a startup, they're not putting money for what the startup is today, but what the startup should be or could be tomorrow. And then the future, you know, this design fiction, future modeling approach can be also useful again for startups to help people picture who they could be, what they could be in the future. As well as for investors, for instance, to anticipate some of the, uh, you know, the again, the events that are going to make this startup heavily successful or, or, or failing. Um, so it's, uh, it's a lot of um, uh, anticipation somehow, even though, again, we're not predicting it. We're just um, creating plans for it. Uh, and it's leveraging, again, that design approach where uh, we're very empathetic. We're trying to have a very open mind about the possible future. Um, and we're always trying to kind of craft this into what we call prototypes or fiction. So small media like, uh, you know, um, a movie, um, a magazine, a website that can kind of give you a test of what a future could be so that we can also spread a bit um, these ideas in those different scenarios. I'm curious to learn a bit more about the mechanics of a design fiction framework. If, for the audience at home trying to sort of visualize what this process sort of looks like, does this sort of start with someone having a hypothesis of something that could happen, and then a group of people sort of think about, oh, let's scrutinize this hypothesis, hypothesis and try to think in our heads how X, Y, Z variable would interact with this hypothesis that we're positing? There's definitely some of this. Um, to walk you through um, the, the, the process, and I'll try to keep it as simple as possible, but um, basically the first thing we do is we just gather a bunch of data about 
put again potential futures. We're not trying to rank it or to say this is more probable than this, but we're just like looking at a um, you know every direction. And so we always try. We always start with a, a specific challenge. We work with a specific company. Um, I don't know. For instance, I work with a, a big national post service like mail service. Uh, in Europe. And so we were looking at what's going to be the future of, of mailing services and, and urban services. And so we start there and look at plenty of possibilities. Then one thing we love to do is that, believe it or not, but we all have a lot of futures that are invisible to us. Depending on, on your education, depending on your job, depending on your role, there is scenarios that you can't even think about because you're, you know, you're just trained and, and geared in a certain way. So you can only think you know, uh, certain ways. And so we're trying to understand what are the future that are invisible to the people we're working with. We're looking at all those trends and then we kind of blend all of this and it gives us, a, you know, tremendous amount of, you know, number of, of scenarios of possible future because again, it's just possible future. So there's almost no limit. And then we, we, we sort them out and we say, okay, this one looks really interesting because it, it help and you know identifying your opportunities or this one completely invisible to this mailing uh, you know company but could completely disrupt their industry and so on so we just kind of sort them not based on how likely it is to happen but much more on how bad would it be or how bad or how good <laughs> would it be if this would actually happen uh, and then with this we as you were saying like run a workshop where we put those kind of scenarios as hypothesis and then just you know people would bring some about it that would be wonderful. That would uh, mean that we have to create a new offer. We have to shift completely our you know, offer, whatever it is. But people start really um, embracing the scenarios and understanding the consequences of the scenarios. And once they reach a point where, okay, we understand there's a big opportunity here, there's a big threat here, then they're going to do what you're discussing, like what you are saying earlier, meaning their model, they're, they're creating a model for this. And so they're saying for us to reach this kind of level, we need to, you know, achieve this, 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 and this. And we would need these conditions. Uh, we would need, I don't know, like people to, um, you know, stop sending postcards, whatever. I'm just making it up better. Uh, and then you have those kind of markers that, you know, are from, from here to this possible future. And then you can elaborate a strategy where, Months after months, year after years, you're just looking at those markers, those indicators. And as things are unfolding, again, you could say, okay, well, scenario one is, is becoming really likely to happen because we have like three conditions out of four happening. Or scenario two is really unlikely now because this, you know, conditions will never happen, whatever. Um, and so that's kind of the way we go about it. So uh, gathering a lot of data, trying to make scenarios, build scenarios that are completely new turning this into opportunity and threats and then creating modelization so that we can understand the conditions for this to happen and then we can have a really good strategy.